Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Saturday, December 16th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Cotton Bowl game against Missouri is in 13 days. The game against Michigan in 350 days. Early signing day is four days away at this point. That is Wednesday, December 20th. And the Buckeyes are most of the way done with their class. But could they add some folks between now and early signing day? Could they lose some folks between now and early signing day? We're going to be talking about that today with Mark Giffler of BuckeyeHuddle.com. He just dropped a really, really interesting and in-depth uh, insider report for all for our BuckeyeHuddle.com members on the Huddle Board presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse, talking about some of the stuff we're talking about today. Also, plenty of stuff on the uh, transfer portal, a lot of interesting, uh, interesting info there, and then some stuff on Buckeyes who may be coming back, may not be coming back, where things stand with some of those guys as well. So lots of really interesting information there. But Mark, today we're just going to be talking about high school recruiting, even though there's a lot of other stuff going on. Let's start with four-star defensive tackle Carlin Jones. He is someone who the Buckeyes are hoping to add to their class, but he still has another visit to make this weekend. So where do things stand with him and his recruitment as they head into the home stretch before next Wednesday's early signing? Yeah, he'll be sneaking in this visit to USC that'll wrap up uh, before the end of the weekend. and. Um... That's pretty much the battle right now is Ohio State versus USC for the former Nebraska commit. Uh, he told me going into this week, he said it's it's really just those two at this point. So Ohio State hosted him last week. Um, everyone seems to think that went really well. They've got some stuff they can sell them in terms of uh, early playing time, especially now with, with Justin Scott uh, flipping to Miami here later in the process. So there's not a, a ton of defensive tackles uh, ahead of him. Um, so they're, they're really working that angle. The NFL development has been very key for him and, uh, we'll see what, what goes here. Uh, I think the only thing Ohio state needs to be concerned about right now is visiting Ohio in December and then going out to, to LA in December. <laughs> you hope the weather, the, the difference in weather doesn't play a role there for the kid from Texas. But, um, you know, Larry Johnson's been handling that one for the Buckeyes and, um, I like where they stand, and now it's just a matter of, you know, we see uh, how this USC visit goes and, and what the thought process is coming out of that. And defensive line feels like one spot where they really would like to add at least one more body, and Carlin Jones is one of the people they're looking at. They're also potentially in the running for a current Florida commit, Amaris Williams. He is also a four-star defensive lineman, and you had a very funny note in there. He's currently committed to Florida. Mark, who are the top three teams in his recruitment right now for this current Florida recruit? Yes, uh, it's Georgia, Auburn, and Ohio State are his, are the three schools that have the best chance of landing him uh, on on when of signing him on Wednesday. Um, yeah, it's he's been committed to Florida for a while. Um, I don't think Florida has led in several months. I think Ohio State's been kind of in the driver's seat the last couple of months. Georgia really started getting involved here the last few weeks. Same with Auburn. Um, so he's, he's got an official coming up, uh, or this weekend it'll be his, uh, Georgia officially had his Auburn one last week. He previously made an official to Ohio state and an on return unofficial. So this is one they felt great about a few weeks ago. Um, do they still feel great? I think that's kind of the question. Now the Auburn visit, now the Georgia visit, you would have liked those to maybe not happen and just kind of be an Ohio state, Florida thing. So I think this is kind of muddying the waters a little bit, but you know, I still would, would give the edge to Ohio State, but it's not something that uh, maybe has moved that well in their direction the last couple weeks, just now that you're not just trying to flip them from Florida, you're trying to keep them from Georgia, you're trying to keep them from Auburn as well. So um, that one's probably tightened up a little bit here the last few weeks. And he is listed just as a defensive lineman. Carlin Jones is listed as a defensive tackle. And Williams listed at 270 pounds, you would think, well, certainly they will just bulk him up a little bit and put him inside. But, you know, Edric Houston is, I think, listed at about 270 pounds as well. And they've got him planning to play the edge. So do you have any sense for if Amaris Williams ends up in the class, if he starts at edge or if they maybe start him at three tech or what what the plan is for him? Yeah, they're recruiting to play defensive end. Um, now. When you look at him, it's kind of interesting. He looks like an end when you look at him, so he's carrying that weight very well. Now, the the, the question to that is, well, what does that mean once he gets into a college strength and conditioning program? Is he going to balloon to like 315 right away because he's carrying the 270 so well? So we'll kind of see how that goes for him. But 
Um, they are telling him defensive end. They're telling Jones defensive tackle. They would love to land. This is not an either or where, you know, they'll take one and that'll be it. They, they would love to land both of these guys. All right. And someone else that would love to land is four-star safety, Coy Perich. He is currently committed to Minnesota and the Buckeyes have brought him in and have made their pitch to him. And where do things stand with him right now? Or are they going to be able to uh, flip the uh, flip him for, away from P.J. Fleck? I think they are. Um, I, I'm pretty confident they're going to land uh, Coy Parrish. We'll see. Um, this this could be coming down here pretty soon, uh, probably the next 48 hours. Um, I, I don't think he's going to wait until Wednesday. I think he's going to make a decision on Sunday or Monday. Um, he was supposed to visit Florida State this weekend. That's not happening. Um, so it's it's Ohio State or Minnesota. The coaches are supposed to both staffs supposed to have in homes, you know, over the next course of the next couple of days or, you know, day and a half, whatever it may be. Um, and then he'll sit down and make a decision before signing day. So I like where Ohio State is right now. I really like that he canceled the Florida State visit. Uh, he's spoken to me glowingly about Ohio State, the winning tradition and just, you know, the NFL path and everything else about the program. He's he they really impressed him on his official visit recently and so I think they're going to get this done, especially you start to look at, you know, Minnesota's got a new defensive coordinator. They've got to make a defensive coordinator hire. They just lost their defensive coordinator. They're, they've lost some other commits in that class on the, along the defensive side of the ball. And it just it feels like it's lining up for an Ohio State flip. Um, but this is a kid who I think people are, are going to be, you know, maybe not as excited about as they should be. Um, you know, he has jumped the recruiting rankings. There's some services think he's a top 100 player now. He didn't have much going on in the summer. He was just kind of a top player in Minnesota, committed to Minnesota. You know, Florida State, USC, Ohio State get involved. Um, again, he cancels the Florida State visit, which is great news for Ohio State. Um, so these are some big schools that started to chase him, and Ohio State was not in a position where they had to take another safety. They they just want to get this kid. So um, this is a guy I think people should be uh, maybe more excited about than they currently are. Yeah, I just looked in 247 has him as the number 85 overall player in the class, which, you know, for a name that you hadn't really heard a whole heck of a lot about even a month or two back, boy, that's that's a uh, a higher rating that you might expect. Do you have any sense for which of the safety positions they're looking at him at? Or is this a get him on campus and just sort of see where he fits best situation? I think it's that because it is kind of, uh, I, was, I was talking to to Kevin Noon about this, we were recording something else for uh, a potential signing day show. If, if, if in fact, Coy is in the, in the class and we talked about, there, there's some parallels here with like Lincoln Keenholz, obviously completely different positions, but he's just looks like a man among boys playing there in Minnesota against the competition he's going against. He's just such a superior athlete that I think you'd like to get him on campus and kind of see, okay, is he as fast as he looks or is he, you know, is that a kind of a product of competition and things like that and get a look at him. But, you know, I think he's probably a free safety. He's a sub 1100 meter guy. Um, so he's, he's running the, the, I think like the 10, eight range in the hundred meters runs four, five, 40, uh, great size. So I, I would think he could probably play back there, but yeah, I, I think they're going to want to um, get a look at him uh, and, and kind of let him run around with some of the, the type of athletes they have and, and kind of figure that out. And he is from Esco, Minnesota, which, uh, based on some quick Googling, uh, is somewhere, uh, it, it, maybe an exurb of Duluth, uh, maybe some is a good way to describe it, a, a small town, 2,000 people. And, uh, you, you know, you mentioned the weather might be a little bit of a factor. I don't think the uh, winter weather in Columbus is going to scare anyone from northern Minnesota. So Buckeyes may have that going for them as well. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, Everyone, I'm sure, is, would be very happy if the Buckeyes had ended up flipping, you know, one, two, three of those guys. But Mark, boy, flips can go two ways this time of year. And there has been plenty of smoke around four-star running back Jordan Lyle, who's been committed to the Buckeyes for a while. Those Miami Hurricanes, Mark, are they going to do it again? Are they going to flip another Ohio State running back late in the cycle, another South Florida guy, and uh, flip, flip him to the Miami Hurricanes? How big of a concern is that right now? Oh, it's uh, it's it's red alert. I mean, it's the highest possible uh, concern right now. He's he's scheduled to be back in Miami uh, this weekend, and um, they've been hanging on for dear life here for a couple months. And I, I thought it's been it's been a hard guy to hang on to for them. And I thought it got much harder when they were unable to flip 
Chance Robinson from Miami. Chance uh, is a four-star receiver. Brian Hartline was pursuing and trying to flip from Miami. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, teammate of Jordan Lyles, their their buddies. And when Chance said, "Nope, I'm sticking with Miami," he obviously has has since refocused his attention on on flipping his buddy to Miami. And I, I would be a little surprised if they're able to hang on to him. And that's going to bring up all sorts of questions now because if, if that happens, that's two years in a row. Uh, they they lose Mark Fletcher late out of South Florida to Miami. And um, here we are again in 25, looking ahead, talking about a Miami-Ohio State battle for American Heritage stud running back Byron Lewis. And I've already been told they are not going to let the Jordan Lyle situation deter them from recruiting Byron Lewis in 25. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're getting close to, to fool me twice with, with, with Jordan Lyle. So I don't think we want to get to a fool me thrice with, with Byron Lewis, but uh, we, we could be uh, three years in a row having these same conversations about Miami trying to to flip one of their running backs late. Well, and there are some pretty good running backs in the class of 20. And before we get to 25, let's let's just real quickly remind people they do have two other running backs currently committed for 2024. So this is not a, you know, last year they lost Mark Fletcher late and did not end up taking a running back in the class. This year, that is not a concern. They had they still have Sam Williams Dixon. From Pickerington, they still have James Peoples out of Texas. So this is not a, you know, all or nothing situation with Lyle, regardless of how it goes. But looking forward to next year, you know, we've talked about a whole bunch of guys. We talked about running backs out of California and Florida and all over the country. But there's some really good running backs in the state of Ohio, too. And you wonder if they look at a multi-back class, do you bring, you know, do you look at someone like Bo Jackson plus someone else like Byron Lewis or whoever else? Yeah, I, I think it's certainly going to be a multi-back class in 25. So the question is, are you going to play things right with the in-state guys? Because if you really like Byron Lewis, and obviously they're in on Jordan Davison as well from modern day out in California, you know, do you take two Ohio guys and tell the two Ohio guys, look, we're going to recruit a third back if it's one of these two guys? Or do you pick your favorite Ohio guy and then chase your out-of-state guys? I mean, they've got some serious decisions to make. But one thing I was told this week is that they are definitely not going to stop recruiting Byron Lewis, even though it looks like you know Mark Fletcher and Jordan Lyle may go the same direction here on them. That That's not going to deter Tony Alford from uh, Byron Lewis, who the Buckeyes are probably leading for right now with Miami being the main competition. So it's going to feel like Groundhog's Day again. Uh, Next year, as we talk about this battle, this running back from South Florida battle that they'll be engaged in again, I would imagine. And there, I, I mentioned Bo Jackson's name. Uh, they also have another uh, another really solid running back, uh, Marquise Davis out of Cleveland Heights. He's you know sort of a top 100-ish back, top 150-ish back, depending on which service you want to look at. But yeah, there are definitely some names to know for next year already. And uh, you already dropped your, what, top... 30 in Ohio was it top 30 top 20 in Ohio for uh for 2025 it was 25 for 25 oh very clever very clever I should have I should have figured that one out yeah yeah so uh yes it was and then it was 15 for for 26 yes so yep got got some early rankings up all right so if you want to get a little bit of uh, local insight on the top prospects in the state of Ohio there's a pretty good offensive lineman who Ohio State's looking pretty good for for a class of 2024 or 2025. And then uh, some of the early names to know for 2026. You can find that all on the huddle board at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Mark has been very busy on the recruiting uh, recruiting end of things. Just sort of skimming the surface on the recruiting end of things on today's show. We'll try and have him on in the coming days because, boy, there's a lot to talk about in the transfer portal. There's a lot of interesting stuff to talk about in terms of how many Buckeyes might be coming back. A lot of the guys who are maybe sort of in between the – all the guys who were sort of 50-50 when we talked to guys on Tuesday, where those guys might be leaning. Maybe they're getting a few more guys back than you might expect. Mark took a look at all that stuff this week on the huddle board at BuckeyeHuddle.com. His Skull Session column, one of the great insider-only features you can get there at BuckeyeHuddle.com if you are a member. It is all on the huddle board presented by Jeff Ruby's Steakhouse. Great great uh, community, great spot to get some uh, insight and analysis that you can't find, uh, you know, you can't just find this ever, just anywhere. Mark uh, has been doing this for quite a while, has some pretty good connections, has some pretty good info. You can find that all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.